Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been entirely too long since I've filmed a normal video and I figured I would start with like a wrap up because I was looking and I haven't done a wrap up since sometime over the summer. So I'm gonna do a September to through April as like a, let's get back into the swing of things. I didn't read that many books. I read 32 books in that, you know, six months or whatever it was period of time that I was off YouTube and so I wasn't just slumpy for you guys I was slumpy for reading I was slumpy for so much stuff I'm getting back a little bit not really it's still a work in progress so I am still a little short shy on ideas my idea quota is gone and so I'm trying to vlog but I'm not doing very good at it I'm trying to film but not doing very good at it I'm trying to read not doing very good at it. So I'm gonna do my best here. I will tell you what I have read over the last six months or so. Um, a lot of it is rereads. So I will go through and do all my rereads and then I'll do all the little things that I have read since then. I do not have any of my books with me. So I'll just sit off to the side and put them here for you. So that way you guys can see them if you need to. Some of them you're not gonna need to see because if you have any experience with my channel. Some of these are going to be does. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started and we'll start with the rereads. So I have a problem with falling asleep at night. I have um, a mild issue with insomnia and I went through a section back in September or October uh, where I wasn't sleeping at all. My husband was on deployment. I was getting ready to come to California look for houses and I was working a ton. So you would think that I was tired, but I was, but I would just lay in bed tossing and turning all night long. So I started getting more and more into listening to audiobooks because audiobooks are the easiest way for me to relax my mind. And so I have a bunch of books here that were all rereads. All my rereads were on my were audiobooks and all of them I did while I was trying to sleep. So, I finished off the Shadow and Bone series. I finished Ruin and Rising in September. I also went through the majority of the um, Throne of Glass series because my husband is only on like book four or something and so I was doing this while he wasn't home. And I did Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, and Kingdom of Ash. So I topped off and finished the Throne of Glass series again. I also finished off the Harry Potter series again. So I had um, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and Deathly Hollows months ago. And then last week, last month in April, I restarted the Harry Potter series and finished book one. And then in between the Harry Potter series ending and then restarting, I was listening to the uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bones series. So I did the first two of those, Daughter of Smoke and Bones and Days of Blood and Starlight. Yes, I have to look at my notes that are right here because I can't remember all the names of all the books I, I listened to or which ones. I do know that the Gods and Monsters one, the last book in this Daughter of Smoke and Bones trilogy, I am about halfway through, but I don't remember it well enough to be able to relax and fall asleep to it. So I keep staying awake instead. And that's kind of not the point of this. So I stopped listening to it and I figure I can listen to that another time. Um, and then I also have a couple of finishing of series or starting of series or continuation of series. And then I also have a few graphic novels. I um, have a library here in Burbank that had the last three paper girls and the last three saga books. So I read um, paper girls four, five, and six, and I really ended up liking them. Three was not my favorite. I was really tempted to just stop after three, but everyone kept saying that it ended really well. So I went ahead and I pushed through and I ended up really liking that one. And then of course, I love the saga series. So I checked out seven, eight, and nine to finish off that series as well. Um, it's not done done, it's temporarily hiatus. So from what I understand the um, 
authors of Saga were going to take a break, an extenuating break, and finish the series later. So I think they're taking like a year and a half hiatus or something, and they've already been gone for a while, so I don't know when they're coming back. But I went ahead and finished those ones. I didn't buy them though. I do want to buy them eventually, but I did not. I just finished the series off. And then as far as series that I was working on, I finished off Finale, which is the last Stephanie Garber book in her series that my brain has stopped working for, the Carval series. Oh my goodness gracious. It has been a hot minute since I've paid attention to those books. I listened to this one on our flight. Part of this, I finished it on our flight from um, Guam to here. And it was okay. Honestly, I adore the narrator. She is one of my favorite narrators. Her name is Rebecca Solaire. And if it wasn't for her, I don't know if I'd actually have finished it. But I did. It was okay. It was a kind of a letdown. Blech. The next series that I finished was Legend by Marie Lu. I listened to finished reading. I don't remember how I consumed this. I don't even remember finishing it. It was not... Sorry, I'm playing with the lighting because all of a sudden this side of my face got super dark and I don't know why. I also messed with the... Oh, I can't do it. Oh, see. I'm trying to make it straight and it's not working. Okay, whatever. I'm sorry, that's not at all straight or the lighting is bad. I still don't know how to make this house work because I'm in the middle and I don't get good light on either side. I need to go unpack my lighting stuff. We found it, it's downstairs. I just have not unpacked it yet. Anyways, I finished the Legend series, but I finished it so long ago that I don't remember if I was satisfied with the ending. And if I look on Goodreads, it says I gave it three stars, but I don't think I actually wrote a review. I did not. I have no review. I wrote read this in October. I don't I don't remember. I don't remember. I just remember finishing it. Which means I probably won't be buying Rebel. Not for sure because I'm Book Outlet right now and I have a problem with Book Outlet. Um I also started I also finished The Toll, which is the side series. It had a very gratifying ending. I really liked it. Um it definitely isn't my favorite book of the series, but it had a very good ending to it. So I really enjoyed the ending. I listened to this one also. I have not been reading very much. I think so far this year I've read like four books, like physically read four books, and it's May. Um, because I'm just struggling really hard to have the attention span to be able to do this. And I've noticed that a bunch of people during quarantine are having the same problem, but I've been having this problem since August. Um, it's like my brain is too full of other things and it won't let me concentrate on reading. So most of my books have been audiobooks. I do have several in here that I have physically read. The Toll was not one of them. I still have not bought in the book, which is another reason why we're doing it this way instead of me holding up a book because um, let's see what else is on my list. I start and finished the Hazelwood duology. Um, again, those books were very, meh. I listened to them while I was playing Animal Crossing last month. And I honestly think that if I hadn't been listening to them, I would have DNF them because there was nothing about them that held my, int my attention very much. It was interesting enough where I finished the book. It was interesting enough where I started the next one. Um, I do not own the next one. I checked it out from the library. Again, I listened to it because the audiobook was available on Libby through the Burbank Library. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. So it's about this girl who um, is constantly on the run with her mom and they're always scared to hear from grandma and grandma dies and so they think it's safe to stop their life of running and it turns out they're not and so mom gets kidnapped and daughter goes after her to figure out 
where she is, how to get her back, that type of thing. It sounds wonderful in theory, but it just took too long to get going. And once she was in the Hazelwood, I really enjoyed it. But that was like halfway through the book, if not more. And so I just, it was not my cup of tea. I did listen to The Night Country. I think I liked it even less. Um, I gave them three stars because they were just very average, run-of-the-mill books. Um, and that was all I read that was like starting and finishing, starting or finishing series. I have, I did read The Thousandth Floor. My friend Chris was reading it, said that it was really dramatic and it was funny and it was drama. And I was like, I could probably read that. And I did. I physically read The Thousandth Floor all by myself in a moderate amount of time. I think it took me a week. Um, but I was very proud of myself. I do have the next book in the series and it is sitting next to my bed. I have started it, but I have since then put it down because I just wasn't feeling it. Again, slumps are so real. Um, I also have been working on a couple of romance books, series. So one of them is called The Clipped Wings and that was number one, number one and a half, or the novellas between number one and two are Cupcake and Inks and Between the Cracks. And they are by, I don't remember, hold on. They're by Helena Hunting and everything I read about Helena Hunting um, says that her books are either sweet, fun romances or they're hard hitting romances. This one is more of a hard-hitting one. It's about this girl who um, is in college and she's running away from her past and starting a new life. And she comes across this tattoo artist who has kind of closed himself off from relationships and love because he his, he's got a tragic backstory. And I thought this was like a one book thing because I have not been doing well with series. And I'm like, okay, one book, we're good. And then the book is going on and the problems are going on and on and on and they're not resolving. And I'm just like, what the heck? Because of course his past is gonna come back to bite him in the butt. And her past is gonna come back to bite her in the butt. But her past comes back literally. And so I'm reading this book going, where is the end of this? And then I find out that there is no end of this. That this book is several books long. I think it's like a three book series plus novellas. And I am about halfway through book two and I had to put it down because it was just so depressing. And it's not like a dark romance where you have, I don't know, I've never really read a dark romance. I mean, I've read kinky romances and really smutty books, but I've never read a dark one. I have read a couple of harder hitting contemporaries, um, like YA contemporaries, and there was some of that kind of thing in there where they're worried about like suicide or they're worried about domestic violence. And this one definitely has domestic violence in it and touches on suicide, but it's not a real heavy one. It's got definitely has murder stuff in it. It's just, I don't know. The characters have spent far too long sitting on the couch complaining about their lives. And I'm like halfway through this book and the, la the end of the last book was that way and this whole beginning of the, first, of the second book is this way. And I'm just like, come on, have some resolution here, work towards fixing this. But they're not, they're not doing anything. And you've been sitting here reading for a while. I'm going, okay, which this, I just, I don't know. I have no idea. I, I don't even know what the ratings are and I can go look right now. I did really enjoy the first one because it didn't have too much of that. But the second book is all that so far. And then it looks like I gave the um, the novellas like three stars. So I didn't really enjoy the novellas, but I'm stuck on Iron Ink right now. And then there's um, Fractured Ink, which is the third one. So this is a three book series. I'm kind of coming to the realization that the second book is not needed. Um, I don't know what the actual rating is. It's a, over a four star for the first one. So I can see where people really cared about this book. Um, and then the second one, which is the one that I'm currently reading, it's over a four star also. I just feel like it's not progressing and maybe I'm just being too hard on it. I don't know. But anyways, that's that series. I do want to finish it because I did like the first one. I didn't realize I gave it a five stars because it's been months. 
and I'm maybe I'm interweaving the first one and the second one too much. It could be wrong, or I could have changed my opinion. I'm not sure which. I'd have to pick up the second one to figure it out. And then the next kind of series I played with was Susan Mallory's Fool's Cold series. I have read three more of that one. I read Almost Us, Almost Summer, and Summer Days. They're really, really cute. They're sweet, fluffy romances. There's not a lot at stake. Um, they're not very believable. It's about this city up in the mountains in California called Fool's Cold that is primarily female based and they have all these issues because all these single girls are looking for love. It's cheesy as hell and I'm aware of that. It's probably extremely problematic. I'm aware of that also but they're cute and they're fun and they're fluffy and they're old. I want to say that most of these books are from like 2000. Susan Mallory has always been one of those kind of writers that I just are guilty pleasures for me. I really enjoy reading them, even if they're not high quality literature. And then um, other than that, all I have left is three more books. I read The Unhoneymooners and adored it. Thought it was the cutest book in the world. And everyone's complaining that um, it was too fade to black, but I highly don't care. Yes, it was fade to black. Yes, there was no steamy sex scenes. But the love story was so cute. And of course, it's a hate to love romance. And everybody was raving about it last year. So if you don't know what it's about, Christina Lauren just writes romance books. Some of them are more smutty than others. And this one is not very smutty. It definitely has some sex scenes in it. But they're like I said, they kind of fade to black there. They don't really show you very much of it. They see you starting and they kind of let you go off on your own and they pick it up afterwards. But I find them really cute. And this is the second one I've read and I really, really enjoyed it. And I plan to read more. I have a few more of her books. They're their books um, already, but I just haven't been picking them up. And I'm not sure why I have a lot of books I haven't read. And that's probably all it is. I also read Pan's Labyrinth. It was a stunningly beautiful book. It took me forever to read it. Um, apparently the author, who I'm not going to pronounce his name because I destroyed it, uh, made this into a movie originally. And then he had Cornelia, Cordelia Funk, who um, is also in her own right a very good author, had her come and assist and write a novelization of this movie. And the movie is placed in Spain and is written in Spanish and so it's got subtitles it's on Netflix and I plan on reading it but apparently it's I didn't I've never seen a labyrinth it came out in the 80s all of my contemporaries have seen it and loved it I have never seen labyrinth um but I guess they're all kind of similar you have a girl who meets who goes into this I don't know how to describe it this one is about a girl whose parent, whose mom, whose mom is pregnant with a baby and her dad has died. And her mom's uh, baby daddy is this tyrant that she met and married shortly after her husband's death. And apparently it sounds like that it was like a marriage of convenience to try to, yes, she swept, swept up and yes, she cared about him, but she more or less married him because she couldn't make it on her own without her husband's income. And it's about this girl and it's placed in during the World War II, I think. And they are moving into the middle of nowhere because this is where the captain or whatever he is um, lives. And he's just this terrible, terrible person. And she is wandering around in a labyrinth and meets some fairies who take her to a well that she climbs down to the bottom of and finds out from a fawn that she is a princess for the underworld and he gives her three tasks to do to endure to be able to come back and live in the underworld with her parents and of course she thinks she's this is great she's a princess she doesn't have to live with this evil man anymore and she attempts to do these tasks i thought it was Really cute. It did take me a quite a long time to read, but I enjoyed it. 
And then the last book that I have on my list is The Cold Is In Her Bones. Um, it was, it, I read that it was a Medusa story, but it's really not. I have absolutely no idea where they got Medusa from. It's about a girl who is turning to snakes, but it's not medusa is at all. Um, so the prologue is about this girl who has affinity for snakes and she talks to them and they talk back to her and her family finds out and they try to magic or religion it out of her that she's evil, that she's gonna be, she's being taken over by the devil and or something along those lines. And they um, leave her in the woods in the snow where she basically dies. Um, she gives herself up to an actual demon to save her so that she doesn't die. And in the process, she turns into a snake woman, like completely 100% snake. And then it fast forwards um, like 20 years or something to this little, so this girl who is a teenager and she also has an affinity for snakes. She has them growing out of like right here behind her ear. And her mom freaks out when she finds the snake in her hair and um, yanks it out and stomps on it. And there's, I don't know how to describe this book. There's like this blight that ever since this happened, the, the town that it happened in was cursed. And this girl is trying to find out what a town is, what this blight is, why isn't it in her little farm? Why is it out, outside? Why is it in her town? Why isn't she allowed to go to town? All these like little different things. She finds out that the girls in town are all going crazy and she wants to know why. And it's kind of like a part mystery where she's finding out how she fits into this thing that happened in the past, what it means, who she is, all that kind of stuff. It was weird, but I kind of liked it. I read the whole thing with no problem. I think I gave it four stars. It wasn't the best book I've ever read but it held my attention. And any book that can hold my attention right now is going to get four stars. Um, unless of course I adored it and then it'll get five, but I haven't had a book that I've adored in a while. So I've been rereading Harry Potter because I adore those. Um, but all the recent books I've read, everything is getting like a three or four. I haven't hated it, because if I've hated it, I've never made it past the first chapter. And if I, I haven't loved anything either, so everything's been like, threes and fours, and if I read it in a timely fashion and I enjoyed myself, I gave it a four. So if that skews anything about my wrap up, you'll understand. But like I said, 32 books in like six months is really low for me, considering that six of them were graphic novels and a bunch were rereads. Most of them were audiobooks, which there's nothing wrong with audiobooks, I just, I like reading my books physically and I haven't been doing that. So yeah, but that's it. Um, I hope this was coherent even a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will try to get back into the monthly wrap ups for May. I've read two books so far this month, so hopefully that will add up and I can hear people coming downstairs. So I'm gonna get off now and I will talk to you guys again soon. Bye.